Hey everybody, I'm Andy. And I'm Sean. And this is the Commander's Brew. This week, Avengers Assemble! It's not the most recognizable score, but that's the theme song of the is Avengers. It, is it really? I, I was like, I was like, I want to help. I want to sing along, but I have no idea what this song is. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is, right? Sort of. It's basically that. You know what? I... I, it is nowhere in my brain. Like, I, like I can't. I can't even try to. I, I'm trying to think of stuff. I can't think of it. Like Someone, I can just. I was reading something the other day where it was like, as a as a critique of the Avengers movie, it was like, yeah, but like, can you even sing the score of the event? Like, what's the Avengers theme? Like, what's the score? Like, we all know Batman, Superman. We know, you know, all these other ones. These great scores that have happened. Star Wars and stuff like that. The Avengers doesn't have a good one. I was like, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Hey everybody! It's episode 128 of the Commanders Brew. Yes, the Commanders Brew. We're a Commander podcast. We brew budget decks under 50 bucks. No card over five bucks. We do different themes all the time. Uh, yeah, that's what we're all about. Uh, this week is no different. This week's theme is a is a special theme. Instead of brewing around like a specific card mechanic, we're gonna bring you like a theme story, kind of like you know, it's the Avengers. We're gonna do the Avengers. Yeah, you know, it's the uh, Avengers, like we said, like we said a million times, <laughs> and then and then sung the the very generic theme. Yeah, song. Yeah. I know uh, that theme song. I know every part of it. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Even so, Wonder yeah. Woman had a better one than that, even though I can't remember that one right now. But that one sounded cool. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is that we're brought to you by some very special folks, our patrons. Thank you so much for everything you do. It's so generous. Cannot thank you enough. Uh, also, uh, Ultimate Guard, Sleeves and Boxes, uh, and the the Wizard's Tower. Well, that's our OG sponsor. Uh, let's hear an ad from them now. Oh, hello. You don't know me. I keep a pretty secret life, but I'm the most powerful man in Ixalan because I own the hat store. Everybody's got to come to me to buy a hat, whether you're a vampire with a weird helmet or a pirate with a classic pirate hat. Or I mean, I know the dinosaurs don't wear hats, but the people who work around them wear a lot of hats. Where do you think they get those hats from? Me. Yeah, I control everything. If you don't have a hat, how do you know what group you're supposed to be in? Also, is it is it cool that we're separating into groups all that much? I mean, shouldn't we be like all coming together? Anyway, that's not for me though. I'm an evil businessman and I don't want that. I want everyone to be separate and to be addicted to hats. I have so much money. I can buy magic singles all I want. And although I don't need free shipping, I get free shipping anywhere in Canada or the US if I go to the Wizard's Tower, wizardtower.com. All I gotta do is spend $15 on singles there. And if I use coupon code BREWYEAR for the month of January, I mean, I don't need to, but if I did, I'd get an extra 5% off. And they give me 3% kickback to my next order. I can't control that I, d- I don't need that but that's what happens anyway so it makes my next order cheaper not that i care because i'm a billionaire or whatever you know in gold and treasure and all that kind of stuff anyway it's just those merfolk they don't have a lot of hats just like a little bit of seaweed hanging down their face anyway buy more hats that guy that guy that guy, if you control the hats in Ixalan, you control the world. <laughs> the true power flows through the hats. <laughs> uh, the true power in this episode of our podcast flows through Marvel's The Avengers. Uh, this is, yeah, this is like a, this is a theme episode, like Sean was saying, which we haven't, I feel like we haven't done in a while. 
I feel like, yeah, we haven't done like a straight janky theme episode in a very long time. Previous theme episodes include Lord of the Rings. Yeah, something uh, like episode five or six. Yeah, a very <laughs> early one. Uh, I tried to put, I tried to do a Terminator one once, and I couldn't really put it together. I, w- I didn't find enough stuff that like to really make it work. But we've done other ones. We did like Halloween, and you did Friday yeah. the Thirteenth once. Yeah, we did a Friday the Thirteenth. That was cool. That yeah. was cool. So this is so, so things cards in this deck will represent things in uh, in and around Marvel's The Avengers. Now I went lean towards the MCU version, uh, not so much the comics, but yeah, definitely leaning towards the cinematic uh, representation. Oh, MCU means Marvel Cinem- Cinematic Universe. That is right. What, I now, I read that around. I just just you know what I read that like uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's a lot of acronyms going around these days. I usually just read them and I just I just don't think about what they mean. <laughs> I just like, yeah, fine. Yeah, sure. In the MCU? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, sure, sure. MCU, like, I mean, what, do, I don't care what the MCU is. I just want to know what's in it. <laughs> so you didn't even think about what MCU was? Well, no, I mean, I guess my gut was just, I don't know, man. I don't know. L- listen, I, I'm intimidated by acronyms, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you just breeze past them. I don't, I don't even want to look at them. Uh, never I mind. Never, but, you know, because like, like sometimes, what was it like? Like, like uh, I figured out IMO. That one's good. That one's yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know BRB, the right? Most, AFK. The most useless acronym ever. What, IMO. BRB? No, oh, IMO. IMO. Everything is sure. your opinion. You said it is your opinion. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Unless but you're then quoting there's things someone. Like, there, there's things like, uh, I remember it took me a really long time to figure out what my face when meant, oh, MFW, yeah. Yeah. and it was really bugging me. So like, like I just sometimes I just skip them because I don't want to go through the work. Because <laughs> you feel like, you feel maybe like a, a bit left out. You don't know what an acronym is, right? A little bit, a little bit. So that's when you go to a great website, Know Your Meme, and you can just get caught right up. And no yeah. one's the wiser. No one knows that you're too old and you don't know what the kids are talking about. <laughs> you can true. just go look it up <laughs> and be instantly in the loop. No problem. Uh, oh, man. Uh uh, I'm not. Uh, 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 let me just say that a a friend of a friend uh, <laughs> might have tried to use a f as exclamation points without knowing what it meant. A friend of a friend. <laughs> I'm not gonna name names. Was it? It wasn't you. I'm. Not, I'm not going to say either <laughs> way. <laughs> you thought a f just meant. <laughs> Exclamation well, like, point. Like the, the contextual clues is you say that at the end of something, and it's like I know where it goes, and I know it means like it's like an exclamation point. I love exclamation points. Yeah, uh, you love exclamation <laughs> points for sure. So, so you're AF. just throwing in AFs all over the place. <laughs> oh my god. Oh I my didn't god. realize I was swearing. Yeah, you were <laughs> You're swearing so much. If you <laughs> imagine <laughs> I've never met anybody who uses exclamation points more than you. And the fact that you thought that you could put in <laughs> AF and as for that, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> the, the these command these these new commander decks look really great as fuck. <laughs> oh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> uh sorry for everybody who has kids out there listening. Um but Sean Sean really thought that that's what you did. That's very funny. Uh, yeah, no, man, that means that's a curse word there. That's a, that's a swear. Uh, <laughs> but see, this is what you got to do. You got to secretly look things up on your own by yourself in a dark room so that no one knows what you're doing. So you don't <laughs> seem lame to anybody. And then you won't do stuff like that where you just blatantly misuse it like so badly. Well, but oh, well, um, let's get it. Let's t- let's take a look at this deck. Let's say what we did here. So let's yeah. just say I had a plan for this deck and I put it together and it was really great. And then I looked at the budget and was blown away uh, because of one specific card. But we'll get to that. Okay. So, so here's the thing, right? We're talking about the Avengers. If you remember way back in the first Iron Man movie, that was the first like step along our, our, our uh, fun uh, journey into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh at the end of that movie, the old end credits there, a little guy named Nick Fury, okay? He comes along and he goes, hey, I'm starting up a team. I want you to be in on it. 
to, to, to he talks to Tony Stark. So that's where it all began, really. That's where it began. It's Nick Fury. It's the it's the Agents of Shield. So that's who our commander is. It's Nick Fury. You might think it might be Captain America or Iron Man, but no. Nick Fury is the true uh, sort of spark and the starter of the Avengers. He must. He's the one who gets them to assemble, really. So. Uh, that's who we have leading up our commander deck, and that person is represented by General Tazri. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, uh, Tazri is all five colors, uh, uh, um, and I feel like the different uh, uh, heroes inside the Avengers represent basically all five colors of magic when, Ooh. You, uh, when you get right down to it. We'll get into that. So, um, uh, yeah, General Tazri, he lets you, uh, the, obviously, to four and a white, the, the three, four, that when she enters the battlefield, uh, you may search your library for an ally creature card. Reveal it, put it in your hand, shuffle your library. Her other ability isn't really, we don't really care. Oh, <laughs> no. Who cares? It's, uh, you pay Wooberg and your allies get plus X plus X, where X is the number of allies. Uh, oh, sorry, number, number of, of colors. colors. Number of colors. So it's a maximum plus five. five plus five, which is like not bad, but whatever. Uh, anyway, so General Tazri is Nick Fury. Uh, but in, And also, in order for Nick Fury to go and get the Avengers, he needed a little something called the Avengers Initiative, which is, I believe, a government, like, agreed, like, approved program. Uh, and that is represented in Magic, but of course, by Conspiracy. Ooh. <laughs> and which goes listen. with the story, doesn't it? It's like a bit, of, like, from, d- depending on your perspective, it could be sort of a conspiracy, for sure. W- wasn't I mean, that I don't know part about... of the... I don't know about like, an wh- arcane adaptation, but it is also that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that for one of the subplots, like people were like, hey, you Avengers need rules. And that's where like Civil War kind of happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. So like that's a conspiracy. Yeah. Yeah. They thought maybe it was a conspiracy to get these heroes together and like, you know, be vigilantes all over the globe. But at any rate, the Avengers initiative is what allows Nick Fury to go get the Avengers. So when you have Nick Fury as your commander... You need conspiracy to go and and arcane adaptation. They're two. They're they're basically they're two enchantments that allow all the creatures in your deck to be of a chosen type. And of course, if we're dealing with General Tazri, we're turning all of our creatures into allies, so that nice. Nick Fury can go and get any of the Avengers that you need. I love uh, it. So there you go. I and uh, side note: aside from the theme of today's episode, I've actually always wanted to build a deck like this where where you really, really, truly use stuff like Conspiracy and, and Arcane Adaptation to, like, put together any creatures you want and have it be tribal. Like, that's, I think, the strength of these cards is that they, you can build a tribal deck, like, all the tribal, uh, um, like, a- add-ons, like, all the, you know, the buffing and all that kind of stuff, uh, but you don't need to actually have it all be vampires or all be merfolk or whatever. You can put yeah. all the all the best creatures you want and then as long as you have a reliable way to get conspiracy or arcane adaptation, you've got yourself a tribal deck. So anyways, that's that's what that's those are the that's the Avengers initiative. Now, here's where um, I definitely did add uh, a, a, another layer to the theme of this uh, deck. And it was Captain America, of course, is the leader of the Avengers. Um, and he is the one to yell uh, Avengers Assemble in the comics. He doesn't really say it in the movies, but in the MCU, exactly. But um, <laughs> and I thought, what better way to get to uh, help Nick Fury once they're on the battlefield to like get more Avengers out there is to have Captain America be played by Captain Sisse. Yeah, and then we'll have all the Avengers be legends. That way, Captain Sisse can get any of the any of the Avengers you want. Uh, but it turns out Captain Sisse is a twenty dollar card now. Uh, oh, because of the because they, of that, the planeswalker ch- rule change, I think. Because yes. now Sisse can get any but any planeswalker. Yeah. So uh, boo. We can't use this card, even though I was happy to find out uh, in real life because I did buy a Captain Sisse when I was in LA for like I don't know two or three dollars or something. Yeah. So now I got a twenty dollar card out of that. That's nice, but it's not so nice for our deck. So instead, we have our first uh, uh, non commander star of the deck is. Uh, Captain America, played by Tajik, Blade of the Legion, right? So Tajik yeah. is two red white for a two two. He's indestructible, which we all know. Basically, it's, I mean, <laughs> Captain America is indestructible. 
Uh, and he has Battalion. Whenever Tajik and at least two other creatures attack, he gets plus five, plus five until end of turn. So Captain America's at his best when he has all the Avengers with him, his team. And, of course, if you get the team and they are going on the Avenge, if they're going to Avenge something, then uh, Captain America gets really, really good, as does Tajik, Blade of the Legion. He's tough. Uh, so far, we're only two cards deep, but I already want to draw on a little eye patch on General Tazri, yeah. and I want to draw a big shield over like where that sword is yeah, on Tajik. Exactly. Now, like I, th- I think like um, you might think I would look for like a shield card or something to give to Captain America. I do have a shield. I uh, actually didn't write it down in the notes, but I gave him like uh, the blue. There's a blue white shield from oh. um, uh, Alara, which is like. It's like if you if you get if you block somebody with it like they don't untap. So, anyways, that seemed I always, uh, for decent. I always felt that pristine talisman reminded me of Captain America's shield. Oh yeah, it does, doesn't it? Here, let's show everyone what we're talking about. Pristine talisman, yeah, a little bit, yeah. It's like a, you know, it's like per is in perfect condition, you know, just like drawing the red and white and blue there. I always pictured this though, the size of like a button. You're probably right. I mean, there's no scale bird here to know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, the bird would would take up the whole frame. <clears throat> Can you imagine, like, like, <laughs> like it's like some weird like potion, but the scale bird is like most of the art, and you can barely <laughs> yeah. see the thing. <laughs> it's like the bird's leg and butt. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, like a chicken, like a puffy chicken <laughs> yeah. butt. Yeah. Oh, what a weird card. Oh, I guess that's how big this talisman thing is. <laughs> it's a very small it's, talisman. It's smaller than a chicken's butt, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how we should, the standard of measurement. It's just like, we can categorize magic items bigger or smaller than a chicken's butt. <laughs> <laughs> we play magic 20 questions. One of the key things you have to ask is, is it bigger than a chicken's butt? <laughs> is it legendary? No. Is it smaller than a chicken's butt? Yes. Is it pristine talisman? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you knew it. You got it. Three questions. <laughs> you got it in three. Oh, man. <laughs> it's always pristine it's talisman. It's always pristine talisman. If you play Magic 20 questions, you always pick pristine talisman. Uh, Just like in I, Bill and Ted when he, they always pick a tank. <laughs> I, I'm in a very silly mood, uh, but I always imagine this is Christine talisman. <laughs> Christine Talisman. <laughs> That's a, that, This is a person called Christine Talisman. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, that's pretty good. I'm laughing. Christine Talisman, man. I, I, you guys should get altars done of Christine Talisman now. Please. Just put a face of a Christine on Just there. pick any Christine you like. Put her on Cri- there. I can't think of a Christine. Christine. Christina Applegate comes to Christine mind. Christine Baranski. Christine. Who's that again? I know that name. <laughs> she's uh, she's on. Okay, this is reaching way back. There's definitely more like <laughs> recent. There's definitely re- better, more recent examples of what she's in. But she's in that show, Sybil. <laughs> oh gosh, no, I'm not gonna help me. Christine Baranski. <laughs> okay, how about the? She's in. Um, She's in that show with uh, Juliana Margulies, the 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 lawyer show. Oh boy, that's all also way too big. I'm just gonna closer. Look her up. Is that what that one is? I don't know, man. <laughs> She's also in the uh, oh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas. She's in the live action Grinch movie. Oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. She's very funny. She's one of my favorite comedic actresses. Yeah. Anyways, uh, so there you go. That's uh, that sums up uh, what we're doing with Captain America. Um, uh, oh, okay. This is this one is my favorite one because uh, this is the one that's most like the mechanics really work out for this one. So we uh, got to have uh, the Norse god of thunder, Thor. Well, he's represented by Nazan, revered bladesmith. Four, it's perfect. Four green white. Uh, he's a five four. He's a legendary cat. When Nazan uh, enters the battlefield, search your library for an equipment card and reveal it. If you reveal a card named Hammer of Nazan. You put it into the battlefield. Otherwise, put uh, that card in your hand. Shuffle your library. Uh, when an equipped creature you control attacks, you may tap target creature defending player control. So you he goes and gets his hammer. He gets his hammer to, like, magically appear in his hand, which is basically what Thor does in real in uh, in real life, in the, in the Marvel movies. In real life. Chris Hemsworth cannot do that in real life, I bet. 
But uh, yeah, so then of course we have have to have the hammer of Nizan in here as well, which is a four cost artifact legendary. Uh, when it enters the battlefield under your control, or when any other equipment enters the battlefield, you can attach that equipment to target creature. He gets plus two, plus zero, oh, and indestructible, and it equips for four. But for Nizan, Thor, he uh, just gets it for free. He just basically it just goes on him, right? So far, I like how all of them are indestructible, basically. Oh, it doesn't. You know what? Sorry, it doesn't go on him right away. But it does. Uh... Oh no! Yeah, yeah. You can attach it. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Legendary and yeah, indestructible. Because so, so far, Captain America indestructible. Thor indestructible. Yeah, now we lose that theme a little bit here as we go into uh, getting the Incredible Hulk in on this. Now, Hulk was one that you could have gone a, a number of different ways to represent Hulk uh, with with a magic card, right? You could have yep. gone just a massive green creature, which I did look into. Uh, yeah. I looked into that. Uh, it didn't feel like I didn't feel like it captured like that's the easiest part of the Hulk. But really, Locus the Hulk, of rage. The Hulk is all about being, but the Hulk is also Bruce Banner. Yeah. Bruce Banner transforms into the Hulk. That's huh. something that's like a big thing with him. So I figured we should get a card that transforms. So I, I decided to represent him with Ulrich of the Kralin Horde. Okay. Three red, green. He's the 4-4 four, four, uh, human werewolf. Whenever he uh, enters the battlefield or transforms. And remember, I, I limited myself to legendary creatures for the Avengers only. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I do break the rule once. But anyways, uh, whenever the creature enters the battlefield, it transforms into Ulrich. Target creature gets plus four plus four, so he gets really big when he turns into the Hulk. Uh, uh, as a and at the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast, you transform him. Uh, oh, sorry, this is right. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, he makes him bigger. So whatever, he busts him up. Uh, let's transform it into Ul- Ulrich, uncontested alpha. So he gets bigger when he transforms into Hulk. And uh, whenever this creature transforms, you may have it fight n- a target non werewolf. So you can have it fight people, which is what the Hulk does. So, like, yeah, it's not as big as maybe the Hulk should be, but it's red and green, which is, like, thematically, like, the color scheme that you want that I think Hulk would be in if he were in magic. you got to have red. He gets angry, right? Like, yeah, he's got to be red and green. <clears throat> but, yeah, we could have gone with Omnath. But, like, the fact that he makes other ones of him, like, that doesn't really make any sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so I figured big dude transforms, uh, fights people. That's the Hulk for sure. So this one I had to break the rule of legendaries because um, Iron Man already does exist in Magic. Uh, yeah. There's a card yep. already that is Iron Man. Uh, quite literally, uh, if you look up the card, Croesus's attendant, uh, it is just a drawing of Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is exactly Iron Man. Yeah, like no joke, it's just a drawing of Iron Man. Uh, for real, the card Croesus's attendant. It's from what's it from? It's from Invasion. Uh, it's a five mana golem. For it has a it's three three and it has pay one and sacrifice it. You can add Grixis uh, mana to your mana pool. So blue, black, red. Not a great card to be honest with you. Uh, but when you have a card that is just a drawing of the thing you're trying to do, I think it, you'd be wrong to not include it as that guy. So, I so, quickly I looked up that guy's art uh, just to see if. Anything else is here. I don't want to necessarily do a spoiler here, but uh, look up Fist of Suns. Fist of Suns. By the same artist that did that. I'm just oh, looking up that wow. Artist. Yeah, you're That's right. That's the Infinity Gauntlet. That is the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> this guy loves Mar- the Marvel comics. <laughs> and uh, you know what? Uh, this card is in the deck for sure. Okay. Sorry uh, about a spoiler. No, you didn't spoil it because I forgot to write it in the notes. So good thing you brought it up. Good. But there you go. Fist of Suns is definitely the Infinity Gauntlet and lets you do whatever you want if you have five colors of mana. Um, Crows' Attendant um, is Iron Man. But uh, Iron Man has many different uh, uh, like things of armor, including uh, the Hulkbuster armor, which is Bosch Iron Golem. If you look at that, that's what the Hulkbuster armor looks like. Yeah. That little flat head. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Bosch is the eight mana legendary golem, uh, six seven with trample. You pay three and a red at second artifact, and Bosch deals damage equal to the sacrifice artifacts converted mana cost uh, to target creature or player. That part's not super on theme, but the fact that it's a massive golem that looks just like it is is pretty cool. Um, 
Uh, okay, so now we get, now we get in. Th- th- those are the big boys. Uh, uh, I mean, actually, you know what? Yeah, the big boys. But here's the big woman, uh, Black Widow, which I'm constantly impressed with in the movies. By the way, how well they they treat her character and how how good she uh, ends up being. Because like in the comics, I like never really cared about Black Widow, but in the movie, like I really I like Black Widow. She's one of my favorite characters uh, on the Avengers. So we had to give her a good card. So we gave her Kiku Knight's flower. Uh, she's it's black black for the legendary human assassin. Pay two and two black and tap her. Target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. So that's going to kill most things. Uh, so she's and like she's she is a human. She has no superpowers, Black Widow. So the fact that she's this like crazy assassin, but she can't quite kill everything. I think is quite on theme. I think that makes sense. Uh, that's very movie. cool. Uh, okay, Sean, why don't you take over a couple here now? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Okay, so uh, Scarlet Witch is in there uh, in the movies, although I believe they don't call her – do they call her Scarlet Witch or do they only call her Wanda? They just call her Wanda because Scarlet Witch is like such a superhero name. And I think because the other company owns that name as an X-Man, like the the company that owns X-Men, although now it might have just merged with Disney buying everything. yeah. Anyway, so now there's two actors. One plays Wanda, one plays Scarlet Witch. They got to figure out which one they're going to use <laughs> yeah. moving forward. It's going to be real weird at parties. Uh, <laughs> anyway, very awkward if you're at at the party. They're both there. Uh, we're going to go with Jaya Ballard, Task Mage. Uh, one red red for a legendary creature, human spell shaper. Uh, Scarlet Witch is all about magical spells, and like Jaya Ballard, from a magic point of view, sort of like the precursor to Planeswalkers. Uh, she's got three activated abilities. She's a two-two. You can either red tap, discard a card, destroy a target blue permanent. One red tap, discard a card. Uh, she deals three damage to creature or player, can't be regenerated. Or five red red tap, discard a card, six damage to each creature and each player. Yeah, Jai Ballard kind of does a, a cool job of, of uh, to me, of recreating like. Th- Scarlet Witch's like kind of ambiguous abilities. Like, what does she do exactly? I don't know. Yeah, she yeah. like can move things. Like, does she have telepathy? But like, she also or telekinesis rather. And but she can also like I don't know make Vision weigh a thousand pounds and <laughs> smash him through the floor or whatever. Like, how does she do that? <laughs> I read somewhere back in like role playing game booklets and stuff that her abilities were tied to manipulating probability or something like that. Like, she could alter. The course of reality, can, but yeah, the, that's what it is. She can cha- she can alter reality. Uh, yeah, it doesn't make the probability angle doesn't make sense because like there's zero chance that the vision's gonna weigh that much, Pro- or like yeah. maybe maybe there is. Maybe it's like if gravity accidentally wells up. I don't know, man. There's uh, a there's another hero called Domino from X. She's from X Force. She she like she alters probability and luck or something like she like yeah <laughs> like that's her mutant power is so lame <laughs> but I mean, uh, if it works it works scarlet witch is uh, technically a mutant also and they don't but they're not allowed to say that in the avengers although now they must be right they just bought fox so yeah i think they're allowed to do all that um well yeah let's do this next one too and her brother uh quicksilver samut voice of descent Three, red, green. This is the legendary, this is the non-planeswalker one. Legendary human warrior, three, four. Flash, double strike, vigilance, haste. Other creatures you control have haste. White tap, untap, another target creature. Give everyone haste. Haste itself, this is about as fast as you can get for a creature. Flash and haste and double strike. Yeah. Yeah, that's as quicksilver as you can get. Yep, exactly. I thought about making some Samut uh, or Samut or whatever uh, Spider Man because it felt that also felt right, but um, I got somebody else for that. Okay. Uh, This one. uh, Oh yeah, these the next two are like uh, this is the best I could do pretty much. Um, (laughs) Again, trying to keep it as much to legendary creatures as I could. Uh, We've got the restriction we've given ourselves. Exactly. We got Falcon. Uh, of course, Falcon, uh, uh, Captain America's a good old buddy there, uh, represented by Commander Isha. Two and two white for uh, a 2-4 bird legend with flying and protection from creatures. It's like, you don't want to make Falcon's character too good. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not. Because he's like, whatever, right? He's okay. He just kind of flies around. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. he... 
he flies around, he fights, you know, he blocks well, uh, Commander Isha here. So, you know, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's okay. It's not uh, going like to win you the game, it. but like, yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad to have on the team. <laughs> yeah, you're happy to have it. I sure. mean, I saw the movie where they let Falcon onto the team. It was really just a dude who was in the right place at the right time. Like, <laughs> yeah. like the, the, you know, like hey, it could have been anybody. Hey, man, we got this wicked, like, wing suit. Do you want to wear it? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wicked. I'm an Avenger now. Cool. Yeah, man. And uh, then all those other people, like, uh, who are, like, working so hard who want to be on the Avengers, like, oh, that Falcon. <laughs> oh, yeah, all the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are like, man, that guy gets the wing suit. Come on. <laughs> I put, I put in 10 years at this company. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a guy who's an old veteran who's been working at S.H.I.E.L.D., working in the office. Man, I thought this was the way to get to the bird suit. <laughs> I've been putting in extra time. Yeah. I've been working extra jobs. Turns out it's just who you know, it's like just... everything else. <laughs> <laughs> this hot shot fly boy comes in here, steals my wingsuit. Uh, uh, okay, who do we have next here? Uh, we got uh, uh, arguably the other least favorite Avenger, <laughs> Hawkeye. <laughs> uh, I never like. I never liked heroes who were all about arrows. Yeah, uh, why do we have so many of them? I don't know. Uh, Tor Wauki, Wauki, yeah, sure. Two black, black, red, three, three. Legendary human archer. Tap deals two damage to target attacking or blocking creature, which. Is a definitely a strong ability in the end. It makes combat very confusing and difficult for your opponents. But also, like, eh, whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Much like having Clint Barton on your superhero team, you kind of go, uh, eh, whatever. It's, he'll do, I guess. It's fine. Oh, he's also an excellent acrobat? Don't care. Great, great. <laughs> cool. Everyone else flies. <laughs> uh, yeah, everyone else flies. Yeah. This guy is good at a backflip. I, I shoot things with my mind. What do you do? I use a bow and arrow. I use, oh, great. Like, yeah, what a regular, like, what a weird hunter uses. Yeah, uh, you're you're very good with it. I appreciate that. But <laughs> This card's not great, and uh, the fact that it's black and red doesn't um, make sense for... Uh, for later magic. It made sense at the time, I'd imagine. But anyways, whatever. Let's get skip past Hawkeye like most of the movies do. Uh, <laughs> this this one was cool. Uh, this one sprang right to my mind. Black Panther. Big Black Panther movie coming out soon. Uh, he was a great addition to the uh, Civil War uh, uh, movie. And, Very uh, cool. So we, we got a Black Panther. Well, we got a black cat. Miri the Cursed. Uh, two and two black for uh, three two vampire cat flying first strike in haste. Whenever Miri the Cursed deals combat damage to a creature, you put a plus one, plus one counter on Miri the Cursed. Cool. This just, I mean, you know, how could you not have Black Panther be Miri the Cursed? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, she's, I don't get it either. <laughs> she's super fast and uh, powerful, has first strike. She can fly. Uh, you know, Black Panther can't fly, but he can jump pretty good. <laughs> so here you go. I mean, yeah, it counts. I keep counts. forgetting Miri the Cursed flies. The, nothing on this card looks like it should fly. I, that's back when they used to give, I think they just gave all vampires flying, basically. Oh, like just that's how vampires worked? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. Like, like you know, some vampire mythology is like that. Yeah, vampires tend to fly. At least they can turn into bats. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. Black Panther. What do we got here? This this card, <laughs> this card is part of my surprises and discoveries later, but I'll, we'll get to that. Yeah. But who do we have as Vision? Uh, we got to have Vision, uh, and Vision obviously has to be some kind of robot, so we're probably going for an artifact creature, and we know they have to be legendary. <laughs> so we're going with Memnark, seven generic for a four or five, and you can pay one blue blue, make a permanent an artifact in addition to their other types, three and a blue, gain control of target artifact. So, you know, from a magic game point of view, uh, that's seven mana total, which you probably have since you paid seven to cast yeah. it. As long as three of it's blue, you can gain control of any permanent. Pretty pretty huge. That's pretty huge. Like, yeah, we should run this more. Yeah, and it's not even that expensive. It's like four, three or four dollars or something. Like it's not that bad. And Memnark, it does great creature. Cost, it does cost seven to do it all in one turn, but you don't. It it doesn't become an artifact until end of turn. It's always an artifact mm-hmm. now. And mm-hmm. let's just be honest. You're gonna grab Sol Rings first, so you don't even need to worry about that first ability. Yeah, you don't need to worry too much about mana when you have Memnark around. He'll he'll get it for you. I mean, you, again, you've already had seven, so. Um, but yeah, there you go, Memnark Vision. Uh, Vision is the um, in the movies is based on the like the the AI 
that Tony Stark uh, created. So um, his ability to hack things uh, is, is pretty relevant, and I feel like that's what Memnarch does. Memnarch hacks permanence. Can I ask you a question right now? Yeah. Are you do, when you do this kind of theme thing? Do you pick the character first and then try to justify the ability into it? Because I think that's genius that he hacks in, and that's what Memark does. Like, which came first, the idea for Vision or the Memnark? I looked f- at a lot of artifact creatures for Vision, and uh, I just wanted one that was powerful. Because vision is very powerful, so Memnarch yeah. stood out in that way, and then and then I thought of the hacking angle, and I was like, oh yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's... I think it's more than pretty good. I think that's that's pretty perfect. You can spin that for sure. Yeah, yeah. I love that angle. Uh, this one, uh, you can decide whether or not I hit the theme hard on this one, because this one was tough. Uh, so uh, Spider Man has joined the Avengers in the MCU. Okay. Uh, Spider Man, some people's very favorite comic character. Oh, people love Spider Man. He's uh, fast. He's good. He's you know wisecracking. Peter Parker, <laughs> spidey uh, senses, yeah, web slinging. Right. So who else? So we got to go with an iconic magic character to to recreate an iconic uh, character like Spider Man. So Widwin the Biting Gale. It is. <laughs> 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 Widwin, the Biting Gale. You know her. I shouldn't even have to read this card. We shouldn't have to, but we will. Well, we because... will, just in case. <laughs> Widwin, the Biting Gale, is two blue black for a fairy wizard. The three three with flash and flying. Okay, like Spider Man comes out of nowhere, right? Uh, and you pay blue and black and one life, and you can return Widwin, Spider Man, to its owner's hand. So it runs away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, okay, here's where we go on this one. So, you know, uh, Widwin comes in, it's Flash, Spider-Man, like I said, comes out at the top of buildings and stuff, comes out of nowhere. Uh, like a streak of light, he arrives just in time. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, right? So Widwin yeah. arrives just in time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> flying, again, represents acrobatics, as we talked about with Black Panther. You know, yeah, slinging uh, around with those webs. And you can really night. swing in and out of play, with uh, the bouncing ability that Woodwin has. And also, Woodwin is a fairy wizard. So a fairy in magic, they have wings. And if you look at the art in Woodwin, it's like they're like insect wings. Insects are only two legs off of being arachnids, which are spiders. So Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, insects are two legs off of arachnids, which are eight. Eight plus one is nine. Plus two more is 11. 9-11 conspiracy. <laughs> 9-11 conspiracy. Inside job. Inside job. Uh, <laughs> I guess took a weird turn in the middle there when they started talking about Spider-Man. <laughs> Remember the first card we mentioned? Conspiracy. 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 Uh, the whole thing is conspiracy. This deck is. Uh, so it turns out Widwin or 9-11, the biting gale. <laughs> I'm too silly today. Oh man, I apologize if I'm uh, if the silly dial has turned up a bit too hard. Uh, <laughs> I'm loving it. It's great. This is what we gotta have on the theme episode. Yeah, uh, we're not talking enough. strategy here. We're talking which silly characters look or act like <laughs> Marvel guys. That's true. Uh, <clears throat> you know what? And can I? Okay, so can I just break in theme for a second? I do think that this is a uh, a fairly powerful commander in the sense that. If you manage it well, you kind of never have to pay the tax on it. Like, if you have some decent equipment lying around, uh, you can make this a pretty brutal Voltron commander. uh, Because you'll just flash her in at an end step. Mm -hmm. uh, And then attach some equipment, attack for a big swing. And then if anyone tries to do anything, you just return her to your hand uh, and just keep that party rolling. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, I, 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 I tried actually thinking about, like, what a Widwin... <clears throat> a commander deck would look like and i just was like i don't know like something that abuses something leaving the battlefield or something like that i don't know um but yeah you're right just a just more of a classic voltron with and use that as protection is a good way to do it yeah and she kind of has haste in that like you you flash it in on the end step uh, exactly your turn, right exactly cool uh when you get into this next one here oh yeah this, okay so this is uh, the other time when i broke the rule of the legendary creatures yeah, because it's perfect, because you got it sometimes, Yeah, uh, if it's just too perfect. So, some people's favorite Avenger uh, is Ant-Man, <laughs> and I suspect that he's their favorite just because they really like Paul Rudd. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, so Ant Man's got to be in there, and we're gonna use Ant Queen three green green creature insect five five one and a green put a one one green insect token onto the battlefield. And if you'll recall in the movie, Ant Man, uh, you know, has a little army of ants he can like ride around on and go through like sewers and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but also. <coughs> Five five is pretty big. It is. So that's kind of like Ant Man growing really big <laughs> yeah. to tussle with the big boys. I really tried to find a creature that can change its base power toughness and be legendary at the same time, and I just couldn't. And then I was like, oh well, screw it. I'll just use Ant Queen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's on theme enough. Yeah, like the insects are little, uh, and Ant Queen herself is big. Exactly. So you can be Ant Man and Giant Man at the same time with Ant Queen. Great mana sync in general. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, this is a yeah. Lots of token decks should use Ant Queen. It's very good. That's among the cheapest rates for a token that I can think of. Just two mana. Yeah, it's true. A yeah. lot of tokens cost a bit more than that. There's another. There's that card that makes the the uh, Pegasus. Yep. Um, yep. But you have to sack a Pegasus at the beginning of every upkeep to keep it. Yeah. But those are one and a white for a one one flyer, which is good. But yeah, a bit more of a cost there. Yeah. Um uh okay, so that's that's the main uh that's the main uh roster there. I pretty much covered everybody, I think. Uh again from the MCU. Uh so there's also a couple of shield agents running around uh in every movie. Your your Kobe Smulders is your uh yeah. Dum Dum Dugan is his name. I think uh. he appears in the Captain America movie somewhere. Uh so yeah, you gotta have those guys around. Uh and they're represented by oh wait. Oh, weird. Uh, it's not showing up. Undo Cleric. That's what happens to me. Weird. It's just not showing up. That's Now mine appeared. Okay, there it we go. It took a long time. Yeah, mine appeared too. Uh, Undo Cleric and some other allies like uh, Hagra, Diabolist, and Tuck Tuck Scrapper. So these are just the guys, you know, the, 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 they're, they're working hard at S.H.I.E.L.D. And they, they come out and they help, you know, clear up the battlefield. And they help, you know, take care of the... the the smaller villains that are just regular dudes like them. So Andu Cleric, these, uh, of course, these are all allies. So these will trigger some nice abilities when our Avenger allies uh, sort of come into the battlefield. Andu Cleric, for for example, um, whenever Andu Cleric or another ally enters the battlefield under your control, you may gain life equal to the number of allies you control. So you'll just gain some life to stay in the game. <clears throat> and I feel like maybe that's what's, that's, this one is the, the Kobe Smulders of the group, the gain life one. She's a good support character right in the in the movie so i feel like undo cleric is a good support uh creature in the game yeah and what about the rest of the nameless shield uh soldiers well oh i see i get it yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. right so so uh assemble the legion three yeah. red white effort enchantment at the beginning of rep keep put a muster counter on them and you get a one one red and white soldier creature token with haste for every muster counter. So, I mean, that we've talked about this before. This grows quickly. Yeah, you get so many mustard counters that you can just cover your hot dogs in them. And uh, and so many guys will come and try to eat your hot dogs with you. And, like, most of this card is the color of mustard anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's true. <laughs> Even the art is very mustardy. I know. It's ketchup and mustard. Ooh, delicious. <laughs> I want a hot dog now. Yeah, I could go Ooh, for a Ooh, when's the last time you had a hot dog? Been a while, actually. Maybe been in the too summer. long. Maybe in the summer, been I too had, long. I had some hot dogs. I feel like, um, but yeah, assemble the legion. Uh, assemb- Avengers assemble. Uh, uh, uh. The legion. <laughs> uh, Avengers assemble the legion of Shield. Um, I love it. I love it. And finally, uh, the Avengers uh, do have one key piece of technology that they use often, and that is the Quinjet. That's their. That's the way they get around their cool airplane, and uh, that's represented by Sky Sovereign console flagship. Five mana, six five, uh, flying vehicle. This could also be, uh, depending on how you look at it, it could be like the shield helicarrier, also, which is a what was in the in the in the movies for a bit, um, like their their place where they met, and then oh yeah, and then I think they don't use that anymore. It, it they blew it up or something. Anyways, I don't know. I don't remember. But anyways, Sky Sovereign can either be either of those things. It can be the Quinjet, or it can be like maybe this is. The shield helicarrier, and then you get like, <clears throat> like the one of the smaller vehicles is your uh, is your Quinjet because it's faster. Maybe yeah, one like of the flash, a, like a something. smuggler's copter. Yeah, there you go, smuggler's copter. 
so yeah, there you go. The, that's the roster. That's the that's the the cast of the Avengers uh, in Magic. I think there's some pretty good ones in here. There's very cool. Yeah, you know what? Like, oh man, I can I just tell you a. Uh, uh, I'm not going to say a regretful story, but here's I made a decision many years ago that was not a smart one. Ooh. I couldn't have known at the time. Uh, when I first started playing Magic, so I, it's all about superheroes, right? Uh, I love superheroes. I love the idea of assembling a team of superheroes. That's why I love the uh, Avengers movies and stuff like that. I can't wait for the new one, which comes out in April. Cool. April 25th. <laughs> uh, so they're used to, they made a game... Um, there was like a, a image comics made a collectible card game oh, that yeah. was all featured around their central characters. And I was like, Ooh, I want to make the teams and they all had different teams. And when you had a team that worked together, they were, had extra powers and stuff. It, it wasn't a great game looking mm. back on it, but it was fun to like play with the characters. Right. And I remember I traded in what was a fairly valuable magic card at the time. Oh. for a bunch of extra of these cards so I could complete my, like, deck. And me and my friends, we got into Magic, and then we got into this other game, uh, and then we quit everything. But that card that I traded in <laughs> for a couple of cards that are now worth less than the paper they're printed on <laughs> was, uh, it was a Time Vault. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, FYI, uh, I think this is the Unlimited Edition. Uh, it had to be. Uh, it now goes for 550 bucks. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Unlimited, unlimited time vault is $500, $550. Yeah. Oh, well, how I was a fool. How, how much did you get for it back then? How much, like how many image cards did you get for it? I got quite a few. I got like I got like uh, I probably got like thirty bucks worth of them, something like that. Like, and at the time, like I remember, like thirty dollars was a ton for a magic card. Yeah, uh, I'd imagine so. Yeah, I, I think we heard rumors that like Black Lotus was like a couple hundred bucks, maybe, and we were like, whoa. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow. Well, uh, you know, uh, you couldn't have known. Uh, you don't have. Couldn't have known, right? I mean, why on earth would you ever assume that, like, this hundred dollar investment as a kid in a piece of paper would like be worth like ten thousand times as <laughs> yeah. much twenty years from now? <laughs> Insane. Yeah. Um... All right, well, yeah, three stars of the deck. We don't really have three stars of the deck, but uh, I got Phyrexian Reclamation and Palace Siege in there because uh, heroes don't die, especially in the comics and movies and stuff. They're always coming back from the dead and things like yep. that. Yep. Captain America got killed in the comics, and he's already, like, he was back, like, the next, like, couple months later, he was back. So yeah. you need you need to represent that, so that's what these two cards do. Um, uh, and... Um, there was a surprise in the discovery for me this this time around. Yeah. And uh, it's a bit of a strange uh, one. Uh, it's Memnarch, but not just Memnarch. I knew about the card Memnarch, but Memnarch's face. I didn't know. I'll try to zoom in for the people. Whoa. He has a little face. Did you know oh that? Oh, my goodness. I No, I didn't know there was a little dude in there. Yeah. I thought it was just this giant crab thing. I know, me too. I I always thought that like that weird giant head part was his face, and that he's just he's like got a, a little tiny head in there. He's got a little face under his giant crab head, and he's got like little arms, which I always saw also, but like didn't put it together that like he that's him, like that's his face and his arms, like he's a person who put himself into this like crab monster thing. Wow. And I think he's he's depicted on a bunch of cards too. He's that guy with the like the the like weird bug eye like artifact look like uh uh what's it called? On the what's that card? The vial, the a- ether vial. Oh yeah. So ether vial, the new art because there's old art for it I think too, right? The iconic masters art at any rate is oh, yeah. is that that's Memnarch on there. That bug eye dude. Yeah, exactly. Huh. Pretty cool. How did you figure out that was Memnarch? I was reading the flavor text on Memnarch, and I was like, in the blur between metal and flesh, Memnarch found madness. And I was like, what blur? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's like, what? And then I just looked, and I was like, 
like I tried to pick out Memnarch's face from what I thought was his face. And I was like, I don't think that's his face. And then look closer. I was like, oh, whoa, weird. There's his, there's his head. It's like, it's, he's like, he looks like the leader, the Hulk villain who has a big, yeah. big, like ma- major, like brain for a head. Well, that aether vial picture mm-hmm. with those little bug eyes, they look like gems. And we know that vision has one of the infinity gems in his head. True. Yes. Yeah, yes, that is true. <laughs> he certainly does. But it's, yeah. anyways, Memnarch's creepy little face. Is, uh, is <laughs> Memnarch, my... <laughs> surprise and discovery, Memnarch's creepy little face. <laughs> yeah, that is the surprise <laughs> and discovery for uh, for us today. Uh, and before we get to the budget report, yeah. we're to talk about Wizard Tower. Let's do it. Uh, WizardTower.com. Go check them out. Uh, this month's coupon code is brew year, right? Or is it yes, brew- it is. It's not brew years, right? It's brew year. Brew year. At any rate, if you put in the wrong thing, it just won't. You'll see nothing come up. So then, just try the other one. Try uh, the other one. Yeah, it's, it's a simple process of elimination. Simple process of elimination. Uh, that'll get you five uh, percent um, off on orders of fifteen dollars or more, right? Yes, yeah, it does. Of course. Um, yeah, so go check it out, and it's free shipping states and Canada. So you'll. Uh, You'll yeah, have a laugh. you can pre-order Ixalan now if you uh, the rivals of Ixalan. I mean, of course, you can't pre-order Ixalan because it's already out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can regular order it. Uh, yeah, pre-order some rivals of Ixalan. Some very exciting cards in there for Commander. Yeah, sh- sh- I saw Sheldon Minery tweet that he thought this was one of the most exciting sets ever for Commander. Ever. Yeah. So I mean, there, there definitely is a push to like. I mean, I'll just, I mean, we'll do our Rivals of Ixalan episode coming up eventually, so mm-hmm. I won't go too deep into it. But, like, we got uh, Raminep Excavator last set, last block, to get, which is Crucible of Worlds. Mm-hmm. And now we're getting, like, a creature that when it dies, you put all the, it's a splendid reclamation, put all the lands from your graveyard onto the battlefield. It's like, well, that's a pretty good way to just cheat out a whole bunch of lands. Definitely. Um... Yeah, stay tuned for that uh, Rivals of Ixalan uh, Commander set review. That'll be coming up very, very soon because the full spoiler is now out. It is out. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, so, yeah, let's, it's, uh, it's time for the budget report. <laughs> this is when we take all the cards and we put them all across the globe. And then we secretly find them in their homes and ask them to join. And the ones that cost too much... <laughs> Won't join. We ask. We secretly find them in their homes. <laughs> it's very creepy how like Nick Fury just knows it. I mean, I guess that's his ability. But like, is there no better way to like just? Couldn't you just send them an email or something? Like, he has to like show <laughs> yeah. up at yeah, their you, place of business. <laughs> you think it's you think it's easier to go to the country the person's in and go and like show up in their you know kitchen while they're making dinner and be like, hey, I'm starting a team. Uh, just although, send a shoot email. Well, okay, but like, let's think of it this way, though. Let's say you're Nick Fury, head of Shield, yeah, and you, you know, you, got, you know, the company will pay for it. You might as well take that trip True. to like yeah. California, right? Yeah, you it's might like, as oh, well. Oh, paid. Put you up in a nice hotel, <laughs> see a couple of sites. Oh, I'm going here for business. I gotta go visit Tony Stark and ask him to join my team. <laughs> gotta uh, go. But yeah, I'm gonna go check out the Dodgers game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's he's expensing so many things to that Shield account. <laughs> yeah, man, who's paying for all this? <laughs> yeah, right. Like they don't fly the hell the yeah it's Shield. It's the government, I guess. Where do they get all this money? Yeah, I do not want my tax dollars funding Nick Fury's trips and like <laughs> extravagant hotel stays. Huge, huge no, controversy. You. Big vote in the Senate <laughs> whether or not they're going to approve Nick Fury's massive spending budget of going to baseball games <laughs> while he's in Los Angeles, <laughs> trying to recruit Tony Stark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the budget report, <laughs> uh, we came just under 50 bucks because uh, it's tough to fit all these legends in. And <laughs> it's even worse when you figure that Captain Sisse was $20 and the whole thing revolved around legendary creatures. Uh, and then I did have to abandon that angle. So uh, Captain Sisse would have been the, the big one. But Hammer and Azan is the first, uh, the first most expensive card. It's, uh, yeah, just, just under $5, actually. This one... This one's getting up there quick. Uh, it's the one. It's the four mana, and equips for four. But but whenever it or another equipment comes in, you can just attach it to a creature, and it has plus two plus oh, oh and indestructible. Um, great 
piece of commander uh, equipment for sure. Uh, allows you to basically skip equip costs and makes whatever it's on uh, very tough to deal with. Obviously, very, very good. This is Mjolnir, man. This is what Mjolnir does. It's It even kind of looks like it. It does. Yeah, it really does. Like, yeah. although with that anvil in the picture, it looks like it's very flat. Oh, yeah. I guess that's an anvil. Is it? Or is that the hammer itself? I with those? I think that's the hammer, but you're right. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I never even thought about. I never even thought that that wasn't the hammer. That is the hammer. It has to be. Uh, I just want. I, I just thought of something. I think it would. When you play this deck, would you equip the hammer on anyone but Thor? Would you allow for You're that? You're not allowed. You're not allowed. Well, I guess Vision <laughs> held it in the in the movie. Although, That's true. In the and comics, ca- in the comics, I think the only person who's lifted Thor's hammer that isn't Thor is Captain America. Right, because he's pure of heart or something. Yeah, like he's worthy of it, and that's why in the in the movie they paid a little homage to that when he when Cap grabs the hammer and it does move for a second, and Thor looks really worried for it. And Thor's just like, what? Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> what? Um, but yeah, that's cool. In, in the comics, I think it's a moment where like, it, it's they similarly did in the movie. I don't know ex- exactly. Someone who who maybe reads um, uh, Avengers comics can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I think it was a thing where like Thor's hammer had like. It was just a moment where it was on the ground and then like Thor's doing whatever. And then Captain America just like hands it to him. Like, here you go. Like not knowing that it's a big deal that he could pick it up. And then Thor's like, what? So it's, <laughs> it's a similar moment that they, I think they tried to recreate in the movie a little bit where Vision just is kind of handing it to him. Here you go. Uh, anyways, hammer's on. Great, great piece of uh, commander equipment. And it's uh, kind of expensive, but I think it's worth keeping in. And you got to have Thor's hammer. Um, although Sunforger does a decent... Uh, imitation of what Thor's hammer can do also. Sunforger can like, you throw it at someone and it finds a lightning bolt, uh, which Ooh. is very on, on theme for Thor. I thought about that too, but the hammer design yeah. is just too good. Yeah, hammer design is too good. Uh, next, most expensive Conspire. card is... Conspire. Yeah, the Conspiracy. Conspire. Uh, I think that's just because it's from an older set. Uh, it's three fifty net or almost four dollars. It's from an older set, so there's not a lot of them, and it's an it's an ability that a lot of decks want, and they haven't given us a ton of cards that do this. Uh, we just got a new one in Arcane Adaptation, but that's a different color. So if you want it in black, mm-hmm. Conspiracy will always be the card to go to. Yeah, and uh, finally Memnarch uh, in his weird little face, creepy uh, little head. Yeah, his <laughs> tiny tiny creepy head. Uh, <laughs> about three fifty, almost four dollars, uh, which is which was surprising to me. I thought Memnarch, when I put it in, I was like, "Oh, I'm probably gonna have to cut this. It's probably too expensive." But it's not. It's um, a reasonable price, I figure, for this this kind of cool power level. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Uh, that's, cool. And of course, I love these theme decks. Out of budget is Captain Sisse, who you would very much throw in this deck. Because uh, Captain Sisse does a good impression of what I think Captain America brings to the team. Oh, for sure. To be yeah. See, this is what I, I think Captain Sisse is better than Tazri. I mean, the tough part is like you got to have five colors with these theme decks sometimes. You got it. Otherwise, because yeah. sometimes you got to reach real deep into the canals of the Magic's yeah. history. Yeah, and you got to pull out a gonna... tor a Tau Waiki or whatever Tor yeah, right? as 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 Hawkeye. If you limit your colors, that gets really tough. So I think Tazri's perfect for it. But the the fact that Tazri can just tap to do it, like I would love it if you or could Sisse. like... Or Sisse. 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 What did I say? You said Tazri is five colors. Captain Sisse is green and white. Yeah. Captain Sisse is green and white. And so, yeah, like, because Captain Sisse can get them out in indefinitely. Uh, if I was running Tazri in this thing, I'd want to make sure there's a lot of, like, blink effects so I could keep blinking Tazri and just keep getting more Avengers. Yeah, that's how you do it for sure. You definitely want to have uh, your conjurer's closets and your thing, things like that that can just kind of on on your end step grab another Avenger and assemble that who would, team. Who would Rune be? If like maybe Rune is that other guy who works for Shield. Oh yeah, like Rune that. could be. Um, uh, yeah, what's that guy's Agent, name? Agent like Coulson. Carlson. Coulson. 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 So he like helps Nick Fury get each one. Yeah. Yep, that's a great one. That's a good addition. I will. I'll, I should add that in for sure. <laughs> uh, he definitely helps Nick Fury assemble the team. Yeah, great, great. Uh, 
cool, man. This is what this is what's so fun about these theme decks. Please let us know uh, on Twitter or something if you like want us to do kind of more of these. Yeah, uh, we don't do that many, not for lack of wanting to. It's just like, just sometimes the I you know, the ideas. I don't know why. I I have no answer. I don't know when I love them. We just don't do them a lot. Yeah, I mean, there's something about like. Will you ever really make a deck like this? And I think the only way I would is if, like, kind of everyone that we play with all had a deck like this, and you could play them all together. And that's, if you've listened to the show before these episodes, that's kind of the like how I advocate doing these. Is like if everyone had like one silly theme deck, whether it's based around a movie or something like that, or just like some people do like songs. Even that that would just yeah. difficult, but you could definitely do it. Um, those are fun. Those are fun games because everyone's it's just like whatever is happening, and uh, yeah, you're just putting out. You get to tell the story as you play the deck, which is kind of fun. Yeah, telling. Yeah, that's the best part. Telling the story as you go. Um, this is a side. This is not related, really, but that's what was so great about the old Star Wars CCG, uh, is that you did you really did create a story. Uh, when you played it, because you they had locations and you played characters at locations, and then they would do things, and I'm, and you had like oftentimes you had like a goal, like aside from just beating your opponent, you had a you had a way to do it, which was like, so like I had a carbon freezing deck for a while yeah. that I was playing uh, against Butler, and like so I would get people, and if I could put them in the carbon freezing thing and freeze them, like you. You basically won. Like it was such. It was. It's like ultimating a planeswalker. If you could, because there's so many steps you had to do to get there. And if you could do it, it was like game over for the for the light side. Um, and I remember one game, I had Darth Vader at the. I had Darth Vader at the carbon freezing chamber, which is like which is part of the things you needed. You needed Darth Vader there. You needed to have the freezing chamber. You needed to ha- have. Uh, a bounty hunter capture the guy and then bring him to there, which what? wasn't just easy. Like you had to like these were like that sounds turns so and turns. specific. So I had Boba Fett and I had a guy and I had a uh, 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 Darth Vader. I had the freezing chamber. I had a I had like the card you needed, the carbon freezing like instant basically or sorcery that like did uh, it. Y- your opponent has to play the I love you card. <laughs> yeah, that you have to, you have to play say the I know. I know card. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the funny thing and and oh and at the at, in the same game, Butler uh, had um, Luke training, uh, doing the Jedi training on Dagobah. So Whoa. like it was fully play, playing out um, Empire. Empire. But the person I had captured was not Han Solo, was not even anywhere near Han Solo. It was like random X-Wing pilot. Like oh, it was just no. some bozo guy <laughs> that I was like the whole. Like, and so like Butler couldn't just let me freeze this guy. So he had to send Luke from Dagobah over to fight Vader. <laughs> so it was exactly Hilarious. exactly Empire Strikes Back without Han Solo, just with some dude. Yeah. You know, what? I, I, can, I, can I share one detail about that game? Yeah. Uh, I remember playing a little bit of that game back in the day. We're it's alternate CCG day. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, I, I I didn't play a lot of it, but I remember being so in love with the design detail. Every character had a certain amount of force power. Yeah. Right. And I think I, I believe Luke had force power of four. Yeah. Uh, for, for the first movie. Yes. And yeah. then and then part of one of the decks you could build was like a destroy the Death Star kind of deck, right? And you could get those targeting systems that you could add to your space, your little X-Wings. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the X-Wings, let those targeting computers let you try to make shots as if you had force power of three. Right, but yeah. Luke has one higher force power, so it does make sense for him to turn off his targeting yeah, machine. You don't need the targeting thing with Luke. Like how he does in the movie. And I was just like, that's amazing to like capture that little moment in the movie Based on how you design the cards, like because like every player who has Luke in an X is gonna be like, yeah, I'm not gonna use this thing because it's better. Yeah, and then everyone's gonna be like, what are you doing, Luke? And he's gonna be like, trust me. Yeah, it, it, that that is that was the great thing about that game is that they on theme and the way the game played out was very on theme and everything. Uh, so I guess it makes sense that we're talking about this during a theme our theme game yeah episode. okay themes yeah yeah it was great but but then again uh it also had like a 200 page rule book that you did need to have next to you at all times yeah yeah 200 page pdf rule book that you would definitely need to look up oh more than God. once in a game like i'm sure the magic like extensive rules is also 
like 200 pages or whatever, but you don't need it sitting beside you at all times, right? Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, but anyways, great game. Uh, um, and it's that's part of the fun of these theme decks is that you get to like, you know, have fun and create little characters and tell a little story and stuff like that. Yeah, man. That's great. So there you go. That's it. Ooh. Avengers Giggly, Silly episode. Yeah. Uh, and an honorary Avenger, Christine Talisman. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be featured on, in the Defenders. She's not quite an Avenger yet. She's uh, she's on the Netflix show. <laughs> she didn't make it up to the main roster, but yeah. in this one we we had to throw her in. Christine Talisman, great job. Had to. Had oh my to. God. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that's it. Uh, stay tuned for a Bruise News segment. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Brews News. I'm Andy. And I'm Sean. This week, we take you to the conspiracy bunker with Leovold. Yes, hello. Welcome to Leovold's Conspiracy Bunker. Uh, it is me, Leovold. Now, don't tell anyone of you have been here to see me. Uh, as you know, you get into a bigger trouble uh, because uh, I have been banned by the rules of committee. They got uh, something against me and I had never do nothing to them. Oh, they are not allowed to draw cards. Ooh, 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 ooh. You, you've been banned, Leovold. Yeah, yes, yeah. Well, anyways, you uh, needed to know what else they got in store for you. Because when I was uh, starting to sniff it too close and get it too uh, uh, closer to the truth, they uh, take me and uh, they throw me into the trash. And now here I am, uh, a shadow of my former self. But let's get into it. Uh, what? Are the, the biggest conspiracies are facing a Magic at the Gathering now? Well, uh, simple. The best creature in Magic at the Gathering is... Craw Worm. Yes, this guy, he has been held down too long. It is going to be soon. He is going to come up, but they got the forces holding him down, saying, oh, this is too much to pay for this uh, power and toughness. Oh, this guy, he's not even very good. He don't even have any other abilities. But I tell you, they tell you he don't have no abilities, huh? But maybe he have several. Mmm, yes. Next, also, you got to know that the plane of Innistrad is flat. Yes, that's all right. The people who say it is around, they don't know what they are talking about. If you go to one end, it just ends. It just stops. Uh, it's like a, uh, 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 it's like a board game. You know what I mean? You can't go off the board. Uh, you're going to, if you're going to a jail, you know you're going to go. You got to just turn left. Every time you go to the end of the, uh, one street, it just turns, and everybody just accept it. So uh, just think about it the next time, you know what I mean? Okay. All right. Uh, next, a conspiracy. Marco Rosawater is a jace. Shh. This is the, the big one. Okay. The truth is out there. Huh? Yes. He a driver to work a podcast? Huh? Jace work as a pirate? Cast? <laughs> I can see you know what I'm talking about, huh? Okay. Uh, he uh, he uh, trapped in uh, the same job, huh? He's a head designer, huh? Jace, he uh, is trapped in a uh, Ixalan, huh? He uh, have a head? Hmm? He is friends with a Vraska, huh? Rosewater, he is a friends with a... Uh, Gavin Verhe? It is very close, if uh, you can uh, see. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of the going on, but uh, but don't tell anyone you heard this from me, okay? Or uh, they're gonna come and they're gonna take they're gonna take more away from me. I cannot be anybody's a commander. I cannot even be in a deck. I cannot even be in a ninety nine. I was made for tiny leaders. I was not even made for this format. Uh, okay, well, uh, I think I hear. Uh, 
some men in the black are coming to get me. So uh, uh, that is Elia Vold in the Conspiracy Corner, uh, signing off. <laughs> yeah. Some of those things seem plausible, but others, no way. I mostly tune him out. <laughs> Probably a good strategy. Yeah, he goes on and on about stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, that's us tapped out. Uh, we'll pass the turn to you guys. Good night. Good night. If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Holbone. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our deck list on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com.